Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Luke Dupron, who's the founder of the Live Great Lifestyle. Luke, welcome to the program. Mike, I appreciate you having me and uh, looking forward to spending some time with you. Yes, I am looking forward to learning how to live great and make that a lifestyle because as you know, the word diet starts off with the first three letters, D-I-E, <laughs> and nobody wants to die. It's all about a lifestyle. So I love, love your approach. I love how you dial in for entrepreneurs, business owners. But before we get into that, give us a little bit of your background and your entrepreneurial journey up to this point in your career. Sure. So originally a Midwest guy who uh, went to school for uh, kinesiology, was originally studying for business and realized man, and sitting in an accounting class, I do not like this stuff. And I made the <laughs> shift into the uh, kinesiology department where I graduated with a degree in exercise science. And then from there, I've done everything from performance work with uh, athletes all the way up to the Olympic level, um, to personal training, to working in rehab studios, to kind of full circle where I'm at now, where I work with entrepreneurs, business owners, CEOs, and really help them optimize the fitness, nutrition, the lifestyle side of things so that they can uh, excel on, on those bigger goals of building the business without having to sacrifice their health and wellness. That's so huge. And I know that um, I, I really, in marketing, I really applaud targeting and picking a niche. And you could have picked health and fitness for fill in the blank, right? Sure. Um, uh, sports uh, athletes or amateur athletes or professional athletes, but you picked business owners, entrepreneurs, leaders. What was it that made you think that's the niche to work on? You know, as I was working on my business, I was, you know, parts of masterminds. And as I started to surround myself with um, other people in the trenches uh, working on building their businesses, these were the the guys that I worked with. And, and I'll point out, I do specifically work with men, but any women listening to this, the, the content will still be relevant to you. And these are the guys that I was surrounding myself with that were, um, you know, in the trenches of building their businesses across a multitude of different arenas. And so these kind of become became the clients. And obviously there's some... Uh, uh, unique perspectives and challenges that you know come with building a business that that can impact your your ability to focus on your health and fitness. So um, it was really just who I was surrounded with and who I was able to start helping, and then identifying some of the the specific challenges that they were having and helping them overcome uh, overcome it, and kind of grew into the practice that I have today. You know, I love it, and it's kind of like you you sit up and you notice. Oh, all of a sudden, I've I started doing a whole bunch of um, uh, clients who are engineers. Let's just dive in deep there. So you just noticed that you started doing good work with entrepreneurs, and and typically male, like you said, uh, if you're female, the, the principles still apply. Here's something as a male entrepreneur myself, you probably get this a lot, dude. I just don't have the time. <laughs> yep. Number what do you say then? <laughs> number one objection for sure. Yep. So the first thing we have to step into is with with the belief, and this does take a little bit of a leap here, but you have to step into the belief that if you are working at a higher degree personally as a physical vessel, meaning if you are healthier, if you are more fit, you are going to be a higher producing person, period. And I hate to use the old car analogy, but like a broke down car versus a car that's optimized is going to take you further. So in the world where we are trying to optimize our marketing and landing pages and uh, our other people down the line, our, our employees, ultimately as, as the leader, you need to show up as your best physical self because you're going to sleep better. You're going to have better energy. You're going to have better focus. So ultimately the small amount of time that it does require, you're actually buying it back from a productivity standpoint. Um, I agree with that a thousand percent. I noticed that myself. Um, and what would you say to then to someone like, okay, when you start getting those positive results, that's going to be motivating to you, self-motivating, but yep. you don't get those, you know, like the runner's high or the second wind, or you don't get that day one. Like actually, we've, if you've not been working out consistently, maybe even day one, two, three, or four, it doesn't feel <laughs> too good. So right. how do you get them past that hump? Yeah. So no, no question. And this is obviously where, you know, the buy-in on the, on the, the front end and then having support and accountability. Um, but yeah, you are, you are, uh, pushing into a future potential and you're right. You know, at first it, it's going to be tough. Um, so this is where we kind of shift our focus from the outcomes and we start looking at trying to maintain, maintain standards. We set clear weekly objectives that we're going to hit 
these, I call them guaranteed minimum standards, which for every entrepreneur, we always scale it back. And now it starts to become a focus on congruency. Now we're just playing a congruency game until those good feelings start to show up to where all of a sudden the self-motivation will come because you're like, why wouldn't I do this? I feel good. But we pull it back and we really start to kind of play the game of, hey, this is just a congruency test. Are you a guy who's going to do what you said you were going to do? And depending on the type of leader or um, entrepreneur you are, that could motivate you in and of itself. Like, well, of course I am. Yes. You know, I, I do what I say. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so we, so and, we and maybe that, that becomes... Sure. That becomes part of your way of learning how to, uh, you know, motivate your clients is just kind of assessing how they they um, are motivated. Like as an example, if you're a boss and you want to motivate your employees, is giving someone more money more uh, uh, motivating than time off, and and it's going to be different. So, how do you determine with when you're working with clients uh, what their motivators are? Um, you know, ultimately it's obviously asking questions and see like, why is this important to you? Because, you know, when we, when I get on a call with somebody to see if we're a good fit to work together, you do have to have some internal drive to do this. I tell people I'm not a cheerleader. I'm an optimizer. I can help simplify this process. I can make it more clear cut. I can hate to use the word shortcut it, but, um, I can, you know, put up some, some guardrails and make this a more simplified process, but ultimately you're going to have to step up, grow as an individual and do the work. And we do have to determine like, what is the core motivation working with specifically business owners? I hate to say it like for a lot of guys, like their business is their core motivator. Now for somebody else, it might be like, Hey, being a dad. And if we can tether that outcome of being a, a, a higher performer physically to whatever our big goals are, then that, that motivation will, will start to kind of grow naturally. So as, as an example, you know, if I do have somebody who's a dad and it's like, cool, man, like what kind of dad do you want to be? And, you know, I'll really twist the knife with them and say, okay, are, you know, are you going to walk your daughter down the aisle or is another man? Yeah. And when you start yeah. to really believe in that, Hey, I'm not going to be able to show up as the dad that I want to be in my current state. Now we've got a deep anchor or what I call a big why. And, and I do have an exercise that, you know, guys have to watch and do a quick little worksheet, take some five minutes to kind of really build out. Like, what is the, the real reason that you're going to do this? Because ultimately, you know, needing to lose 20 pounds or 40 pounds. Great. Um, that's not probably going to get you through, but if you can understand that, wow, man, I'm going to show up differently in my relationships, differently in my business yeah. and the things that are actually really important to you, then you're going to see it through. Well, it, it then gets down to crash diet, yo-yo diet, whatever you want to call it, but you know, the D-I-E part of that word diet, sure. because anybody can go lose that 10 or 15 pounds. You know, it's, it's yep. really simple math. If yep. your metabolism takes X number of calories, then don't eat that many, eat this many less, and you're going to lose weight or, or, or burn some more. It's really simple, but guess what happens? You starve yourself and deprive yourself for a certain amount of time. And then, yay, I got to check that box. And then boom, you rebound right back, if not worse. So you're exactly right. You need to take that minute to sharpen the ax ahead of time to figure out the why, because you don't want to feel pushed. You want to feel pulled and motivated. And what is that? Why? Maybe Maybe it is, you know, I want to be the first person in my family too, or maybe it is, I want to have that extra pep in my step. But once you figure that out now, all of a sudden it's like, okay, you don't need to have the wake up call and remind and, and the accountability, those things are helpful. But I think the why behind it is just the, the, the genius. Yep. And if you get, once you get that going and, and somebody like yourself, Mike, who's on the other side of this, who's. Um, actualize these things, you'll start to realize. And as you know, once you've seen it through and now you start to feel good, it's like, why wouldn't you do this? Why wouldn't you eat this way? Why wouldn't you move this way with your body? Because now there is real um, positive reward and return on that investment. Um, but at first you're right. We're going to have to pull through with some, some deeper core motivation to get it going. So obviously you have gone through certifications and trainings and come up with your own system. So talk a little bit about your framework. Your three-step sure. framework. Yeah. So there's I can really simplify it down to you know three steps. And within these three steps, we're obviously going to optimize the heck out of it. But um, it really comes down to build, fuel, and move. So in the build phase, we're basically going to install a minimum effective dose resistance training program. And this serves a couple purposes where we are trying to mitigate muscle loss and or maximize muscle gain from a body composition standpoint. And when I say minimal effective dose, this is going to be based unique on your specific lifestyle and your capacity to integrate it. So for some guys, it's like, who are like really time strapped. It's like, we're not going to the gym. Are you kidding me? We don't have time for that. So we're going to, you know, invest in some adjustable dumbbells and we do the workout at the office before we leave and, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll make it work. Um, 
And of course, all of these things are going to be tweaked along the way. And that's kind of a big part of what I do. And then the fuel side is we obviously have to optimize what we're eating. And, and you mentioned earlier, basically a caloric deficit. And yes, that is going to control your weight loss. But that telling people that is pretty much the equivalent of saying to save more money, you need to spend less and uh, doesn't really give you any tools to do that. So we're really keen on helping men install custom nutrition that's built around the foods that they actually enjoy. And this is how we avoid that crash diet. Uh, yep. We want to have very specific outcomes that we're targeted for because there are targeted rates of fat loss that are going to be more optimal and more sustainable. So at the end of the three, six, nine, 12, whatever it is, if you can't maintain it, it was an absolute waste of time and we integrated incorrect strategies. So on the fuel side, it's bringing in a nutrition plan that's built around foods that you actually enjoy and make you feel good. Like what a crazy concept. So you don't have to do, you know, you don't have to go keto. You don't have to cut out all your carbs. You don't have to do juice cleanses. Like you don't have to do all this craziness, which is what most guys and gals want to dive into. Yeah. Um, and then the last piece is we need to move and the move phase is actually kind of challenging for people, but when you want to stimulate caloric burn through, uh, what we are going to call non-exercise activity thermogenesis, basically low level movements. So we're not going to go put you on the treadmill. We're going to first see how do we add into our day before we add on and adding in could be something as simple as, Hey, when you're on sales calls, let's get you up, put your headset in, let's have you pace around the office. And believe it or not, these small little things, when brought together, all of a sudden you have a really manageable lifestyle approach to fitness that doesn't really take up a ton of time, but gives you a massive return on that investment. Yep. I love it. Uh, you had mentioned, did you mention MEP? Am I remembering that correct? So move, fuel, uh, move, build, fuel, move. No, but um, it made me think of um, like uh, in the book, The Lean Startup, they talk about the MVP, oh, sure. the minimum viable product, yeah, meaning yeah, so, just yep. do the basics, just get, just get something started and then tweak and improve from there. So what you said made yes. me think about don't jump into the six day a week, two hour a day workout routine. It, that might not ever be feasible or necessary. Just start slow and then build slowly from there. Yep. And it goes beyond the psychological side of, hey, let's not bite off more than we can chew. Ultimately, we want to save physiological leverage. So yeah. uh, I, it's so funny when I get on calls with, with guys, I'll ask them on an intake form, how many days realistically can you dedicate towards specifically exercise, not the other stuff? And I can't tell you how many guys come back and say seven. And it's like, cool. How'd that work for you last time? Yep. And so we're always going to scale it back. And again, we set, yes, minimal guaranteed standards. So nothing can come up, no business meeting. We're going to hit these minimum guarantees. We're going to hold that standard. Then over time, we'll raise it. But the idea is we do want to save that leverage. We don't want to pull all of these physiological levers, which this is what most guys do. They diet hard. They're going to work out crazy. They're going to add sprints. They're going to, you know, they're, they're motivated guys. They're, these are guys who have built big companies. So yeah. they do have this ability to hunker down and do the work, but you will not but outwork. Can it be physiology. sustained? Right. Yeah. Can it be sustained? And is yeah. it physiologically more impactful? And for most guys, it's actually going to be not. So we want to save that yeah. leverage and strategically pull that as needed. And and pull it as needed um, in a sequential strategic way. And where I'm where I'm going with it is what I'd mentioned you know a minute ago, which is like um, ultimately we want you to be working out this many days a week in this long per workout, but not today. This is day one because we don't want to you know throw you in and now you're so sore you can't even get up. So now you're just gonna throw your hands up. So I think that that's a a huge piece of of things is 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 leveraging yourself and knowing yourself, right? So mm -hmm. do it kind of that slow. Here's some here. It makes me think of something else too. You know, the obvious reasons why you work out are what gain weight, lose weight, gain all of the different, all the normal things. But I, I would suspect that you have found that there are some metrics and some um, uh, results that people get that aren't uh, you know, that down the beaten path. And, and where I'm going with it is this, I, I was listening to an old, um, uh, Tony Robbins uh, uh, recording uh, this past weekend, and he was talking about how the majority of, you know, like 85% of your emotions are based on motion, yeah. meaning yeah, yeah. to change your state, get up and do some, I mean, I don't know, do 10 jumping jacks and just get sure. your blood pumping. So talk a little bit about how, okay, yeah, when you work out and you, and you um, adjust your diet, you're going to. Uh, and uh, um, experience those things we, that you want, like 
you know, maybe a trimmer waste and maybe a little bit more energy. But what about from the emotional standpoint? What about from the outlook on, on life? You know, maybe you're just kind of waking up and you don't hit the snooze. You know, what are some of those other things that people don't think of that are results? Yeah, man, you're uh, you're you're hitting the nail on the head of the stuff that excites me. So, you know, ultimately, when somebody comes to me, if they want to lose, you know, 30 pounds, great. That That is exciting to see them actualize that. But what is really lights me up as a coach is seeing people try to quantify like what it is to feel really good to wake up yeah. and like, man, I just like, I got like a pep in my step. And like, that's exciting to me. Um, on the emotional side, you're right. As far as uh, we can use our physiology to impact our psychology. And, you know, if we're dealing with stress and anxiety and you haven't pulled the lever of, of leveraging your body to deal with that, particularly again, as a business owner, who's in the trenches, it's like, man, you got some low hanging fruit right there. That will radically transform how you manage stress, how you deal with anxiety. I mean, this is all obviously documented. That's like probably one of the best things that you could do. So um, yeah, that's the stuff that to me is really exciting is when somebody's trying to convey to me how good it feels to feel good because <laughs> yeah. it seems like they really can't describe it, but they're they're well aware of of the, the ramifications of of taking taking ownership, really. Well, they need to realize how good it feels to feel good. And that only happens when they're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, right? Yep. You know, it's like those little cliche things. But in reality, you can probably lay out a routine that works like a charm with client A and show client B that. And they're like, mm, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I, I get it. The reasons. But until someone gets to the point where they're like, okay, this is it. I've tried this and that and the other. It's not worked. My time is now. Yeah. Right. I'm, yeah. That's typically when they are going to be the most receptive. So, you know, just like with any relationship or decision, sometimes you're going to start communicating with someone before they've made that final decision, right? Like, okay, I, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. What are some of the things that you provide people from your website or from an educational standpoint to help them kind of reveal those things? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do want that pep in my step. And and I do want those like ancillary things. What are some of those um, helpful educational things that you provide? Um, that's an interesting question. You know, on, on social media, I really am... Uh, adamant about trying to actually deliver value on in my content. So I do think I'm doing a pretty good job in that sense. Uh, I've also hosted a podcast with you know 80 or 90 expert interviews it's called the Live Great Lifestyle and highlighting people who have kind of had that. Um, so yeah, that's an that's an interesting question that I'm gonna I'm gonna have to ponder that one yet a bit. Um, <laughs> it is it is something that again is it's hard to uh, articulate for people and the best way to to maybe highlight it is to say like envision when you are sick or hung over because most people have been there and then you really begin to appreciate what it is to be healthy. And I think if you haven't, again, optimized your nutrition, your exercise, and again, a lifestyle that's kind of, uh, I don't want to say built around that, but integrates that there's another degree that you simply haven't, or another gear that you haven't tapped into and you really won't know what it is until you get there. I mean, that helps people turn the light bulb on to make them come to that decision on their own, that change must happen and change must happen now. So I do think you have to highlight, you know, where are you maybe not showing up? And again, this could be in the the relationship side. You may find yourself again, if you're a dad and you're like, yeah, my kid wants to like go out and throw the ball, but I'm too tired. And like, that's a big slap in the face. You know, I, I had a guy yeah. on my podcast who, uh, he went to chase his kid at the park and he had a heart flutter and he realized, wow. holy cow, he's like, I, I might not be here for my three-year-old or my wife. And he went on to lose 200 pounds. This is a childhood friend of mine who was morbidly obese his whole life. And so he needed that big core driver. Um, again, for somebody else, it could be a health scare. And they realize like, man, I'm not going to be able to see this business through. So it really is, I think, anchoring it to whatever is the most important thing to you. And again, I hate to say it. There's a lot of guys that are going to choose business over family sometimes, it yeah. seems like. And if that is your biggest value, you got to tether the idea that you working better physically is going to have massive ramifications in that business. And if you can tether that idea, then yep. it becomes easy to, I think, make those steps forward. And what if you start sensing from this client that they just are just competitive, right? And they want to just crush the competitor. Maybe some of the com the thought process could be, to, you know, do you want your business to kind of like default back to your competitor one day? What if you drop dead? And what if your employees don't take over the business and your competitor just buys you out? You know, wouldn't that just, you know, gall you? 
You're right. And, yeah, yeah. And, and <laughs> so it, it kind of reminds me of the the gamification of setting goals. Like, okay, I'm gonna you know pay hundred dollars into this app, and if I lose my weight, I'm gonna get the hundred dollars back. Or if I don't lose it, then I'm gonna gift it to this charity that I don't really want to support. So it motivates me. You've got to figure out what drives yourself so that you can self motivate yourself. And I don't care whether it's like, oh, I love coffee, so when I get that workout done, I'm gonna have an extra cup of coffee, or when I whatever the case is, you got to figure out what's going to drive you. And if it's family, like the uh, friend in the park with the kid, if that's what drives you good, if it's business, then use that as the carrot to drive you to hit those goals. Yep. And I, I tell people there's nothing wrong with leaning in and leveraging a little ego in the beginning. At the end yep. of it, again, you will eventually be pulled through from positivity to where, again, it, when you're like, I just feel good. I wake up. I have more energy. It becomes a, a non-negotiable for yourself because why would you not do something that makes you feel incredible? So, uh, but to get there, yeah, uh, if you got to leverage a little of the ego and even if it's like, hey, you're a physical representation of your business. So yep. is this the physical representation that you want to put forward? Like, 100%. You, know, you got to look at that as well. Well, Luke, it, I love your approach. I love your your mentality of fitness and how you apply it to entrepreneurs, business owners. If someone is listening to this going, okay, uh, we're going to learn more. We're going to connect with you. What's the best way that they can reach out and connect with Luke? Uh, easiest place is to just go to livegreatlifestyle.com. Um, I have a free training there that actually does educate you on this. It's not just some big sales pitch. Um, and they can check that out. It will break down that build, fuel, move concept a little bit more. And you can kind of see how this could be integrated into your unique situation. So that's at livegreatlifestyle.com. I love it, Luke. Thank you so much for coming out today. It was a real pleasure talking with you. Mike, my pleasure. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.